Okay, we're back and we're going to start talking about how to do genetic crosses. This is important stuff for you to understand how it works and so I ask that you really pay attention to how to do these. So let's start off with an example. We have a heterozygous tall and short pea plant that are crossed. What are the genotype or sorry, a heterozygous tall and a short pea plant are crossed. What are the genotype and phenotype ratios of their offspring? Well, there are several steps to solving genetic problems. The first one is to write the dominant and recessive traits and assign them a letter. Now, a key to assigning the letter, if it's not given to you, is please pick a letter that you can tell the difference between the uppercase and lowercase. So something that's different, like D or B or E or F, um, G is different, H is different, A is different. But things like C or W or X, they don't work very well. So try and avoid those if you can. So let's say, using our example, that tall is the dominant. And tall can be big T, big T, or big T, little t. And short is a recessive, and that's little t, little t. Okay, so step two is to write the genotypes for the parent cross. Well, it says up here he's a heterozygous tall plant, so that means he's big T, little t, and the short P plant is little t, little t. Because dominant is tall, you only see short in the homozygous recessive condition. Finally, you set up the Punnett square and solve it. And so when we use our example, what you do is you split the genotypes of the parents uh, apart because remember this is sperm and egg we're talking about here um, or in this case pollen and seed um, or pollen and ovary so you have to split the genes you can't just put them all in one square and so you set it up it's a two by two square we'll put mom on top or sorry the first one on top and the second one on the side and then what you do is you bring the parts down from each column heading. So we put the big T in the two boxes on the left and the little T in the two boxes on the right. And then we bring the, the row headings across. So we bring that little T across and that little T across. Okay, so that's your Punnett square. And finally, and this is the step that often people miss, is to answer the question. So it's asking you what the genotype and phenotype ratios of, our, of their offspring. First of all, genotype, remember, is the letters. And so we look back at our Punnett square that we had here, and we go, okay, well, I've got two big T, big little t's, and two little t, little t's. And the colon just means two. So you say two little t, little, big t, little t's, two, two little t, little t's. And the phenotype ratios, if you take a look at your previous one, you take a look at step one, it tells you what those phenotypes are going to be. So tall is anything with a big T, short is anything with little t. So the phenotype ratios are too tall to too short. Okay, so here's your practice time. A homozygous purple pea plant is crossed with a white flowered pea plant. Purple is dominant. What is the phenotype ratios of the offspring? And just as a reminder, you always use the same letter, capital and lowercase, for the traits. You can't use P and W, you have to use P and P or F and F, it's up to you. So let's try it. Step one, dominant is purple, recessive is white, and we've assigned F as the, as the letter. Step two, it says homozygous purple, so it's big F, big F, times a little F, little F. Step three is to set up the Punnett square, so remember you split those. And then you bring the column headings down 
and then bring the row headings across. And step four is to actually answer the question. And that's wrong. I'm sorry about that. It should be the genotype ratios are all big F, little f, and the phenotype ratios are all purple. So I apologize for the mistake there. Okay, so let's take a look at this. A test cross is performed to test the genotype of an individual by crossing it with the, with the recessive. In cats, long tails are dominant to short. A long-tailed cat was crossed with a short-tailed cat, and half the offspring had short tails. What's the genotype of the long-tailed cat? Now remember, in short-tailed cats, you can only have the two recessives. So dominant is long, and recessive is short. We've assigned the letters. Step two is to write out the cross. Now notice, we don't know what that long-tailed cat is, so we have to do two of them. We have to do a homozygous dominant or a heterozygous dominant. So step three, we have to actually do two Punnett squares. So here's the first one. Bring those column headings down and bring the row headings across. And here's the second one. Bring the column headings down and then the row headings across. So if you take a look at the three at the step threes. If you look inside the Punnett square, the only place where we get short-tailed cats as a result is the second square, the one that started off with the heterozygous dominant. So step four is to answer the question. And there you go. Okay, so these are pretty simple. But now we're going to actually cross two traits. Each trait is treated individually, but combined. And then you use the same four steps. So what do I mean by combined? Well, if you have an A and a B, you have to have in each column heading, in each row heading, an A and a B together. Because you get one copy from mom, one copy from dad, but there's multiple combinations of ways to do that. So let's take a look at an example problem. These are called dihybrid crosses. The ability to run normally is a dominant trait. Mice with this trait are called running mice. The recessive trait causes them to run in circle, circles only, and they're called waltzing mice. Hair color is also inherited in mice. Black is dominant over brown. If two heterozygous running heterozygous black mice are crossed, what are the phenotype ratios of their offspring? Okay, so I've given you the letters, but let's go ahead and take a look at it. So step one. Dominant is running over waltzing, and also black over brown. And now the step two is to write out the crosses. Well, it says two heterozygous running heterozygous black, so you know it's big R, little r, big B, little b, times another one. Now you have to get the possible combinations for your square. So you take that first big R, and you say, okay, well, it could go with a big B, or it could go with a little b. And then you take the second little r, and it can go with a big B, or it can go with a little b. So those are your four possible combinations of traits. Those are the four possible ways that you can get an, um, sperm and egg from that combination. So now we're going to set up the Punnett square. Remember that we've got these four on the right-hand side combinations as possibilities. So when we set up the Punnett square, it's a much bigger one because there's four possibilities times four possibilities. So you actually have a 16 square uh, Punnett square. So here's the first big R, big B, big R, little B, little R, big B, little R, little B. And the same thing down the side. And now we're going to bring those column headings down. And I want you to be doing this while you're doing and while you're working on this because it's not as good to be passive. Okay, so we bring those down the side, and now we're going to bring the column head or row headings across. And 
And your easiest thing to sort out what you've got left is to actually cross them out as you go so you can determine what you've got. So I'm only asking for phenotype ratios here, and I typically only will, unless it's a really simple one, uh, for two trait crosses, because the phenotype ratios are really all we're interested in on this one. So possible phenotypes, we've got running black, running brown, waltzing black, and waltzing brown. So let's start crossing them off for running black. Well, there's <clears throat> nine of the running black, three of the waltzing black, three of the running brown, and one of the waltzing brown. And when you have a dihybrid cross, which is truly dihybrid, where you've got two heterozygous um, for both characteristics, you're going to see this 9-3-3-1 ratio. So it's nine dominant dominant, three dominant recessive, three recessive dominant, and one recessive recessive. And they add up to 16. But your best bet right now, don't memorize that because you can get really, really messed up. So I want to make sure that you can get this right. Okay. So what I showed you before is single gene dominance. Now we're on to other types. Incomplete dominance is common in flowers. And in this case, we're talking about snapdragons. So red is incompletely dominant to white. In hybrids, the heterozygotes are pink. So in this case, you have, you know, in step one, you're going to set up three different um, combinations. So what are the genotype ratios and phenotype ratios of the offspring of two pink snapdragons? Well, same four steps. So step one is dominant, red, recessive is white, and the heterozygote is pink. You actually have to list that one out now. So red is big R, big R, white is little r, little r, and pink is big R, little r. Now step two is to set up the cross. And it's this two pink, so we got big little big R little R times big R little R, and then we set up the Punnett square. We're back to a simple one, so split the characteristics, and then bring down the columns, and bring across the rows. Now I want you to note here that in the top right col uh, square you've got little R big R, and in the bottom left square you've got big R little R. They're the same genotype. Okay, typically we write them with the capital first. I just put it this way so that you could see the column headings and row headings going across correctly. But um, keep in mind that they are the same thing. They're not individual. Okay, so what you see with an incomplete dominant is this is what your results are because it's asking for the phenotype ratios and the genotype ratios. So genotype ratios one big R little big R to two big R little R's to one little R little R. And the phenotype ratios are going to follow the same numbers, unlike usual. And so the phenotype ratios are one red to two pink to one white. Because remember, incomplete dominance shows a blending in the of traits in the heterozygote. Incomplete dominance is different though from co-dominance. In cattle, red cattle, which we could call big R, little, big R, big R, if they're crossed with a white individual, they produce offspring that are roan, like this one. Roan cattle aren't pink, they're red and white, so they show both red and white, so they show both traits. Another one is multiple alleles. Yes, you only have two alleles for uh, a trait, but multiple alle that doesn't mean that there's only two possibilities and in the case of blood types there are a lot of possibilities so we've got type o a b and a b blood so you can see that a and b are um, co-dominant because they both get expressed they're not blended they're co-dominant but if you take a look at the genotypes you'll see that o is little i little i and anywhere little i occurs with an A or a B, it's simple dominance because A or B is dominant to O. So you can only have type O blood if they have little i, little i. Now I think dogs have something like six or eight types of blood, so we've actually gotten off lucky with only four. All right, A and B are both dominant to O, but A is co-dominant to B. Keep that in mind, okay? So we're going to practice with this. 
a woman with type A blood whose father was type O married a, a man with type AB blood. What will the possible genotypes and phenotypes of their children be? Okay. The reason I told you what her father was is so that you know that she's a heterozygote because dad could only give a, a little I and she's got type A. So that means she's got type A and it's a heterozygote A. So type out the dominance and put the letters in. And these letters are stable. You don't change them for um, blood types. Okay, so we've written out the steps. Now we write the cross. We know that she's bi uh, IA, uh, little i, and the man is type AB, which there's only one genotype for that. So step two is to write out the cross. And now we're going to do step three. So we're going to cross those two. And it's a two by two cross. So we're going to put mom across the top and dad on the side. And then we're going to bring those column headings down and bring those row headings across. And there's your Punnett square. So let's take a look at the genotype ratios. And that can get a little hairy, so you may want to write them in a way that makes sense to you. And the phenotype ratios are a little bit easier. Two type A's, one type AB, and one type B. Notice there's no type O's. But let's take a look at this one. A man is homozygous for blood type A. His wife has blood type AB. What is the possibility that their future child children will have blood type AB? Okay, so we write out the steps, step one. And then we say step two, we're going to cross it. So we know he's homozygous. So his, he's IAIA times IAIB. And we're going to set up that square. Put him across the top. Put her across the side. Bring those column headings down. Bring the column uh, row headings across. And they're asking, what is the probability for step four? We have to answer the question. So what is the probability of their future children having blood type AB? Well, if you take a look, 50% of them. Because the Punnett square, you have IA, IB. Okay, one thing to note, Punnett squares are just mathematical uh, ways of determining probability, okay? It's just like flipping a coin, it's probability. So when you talk about genes, you don't say, oh yeah, two of your children will be type AB blood and two will t be type A. No, you could have all type A blood. You can flip a coin and come up with four heads at the same time. Um, but it's likely that you're going to have 50% of your children having AB blood and 50% of your children having type A. And that's similar to... Um, for those of you who watch reality television, there was a show called, um, I think, Little People, Big World. And it was about this family of achondroplastic dwarfs who had children. And it followed them through their daily lives. Well, the mom and dad were both dwarfs. But three out of their four children were um, normally sized. Well, according to Punnett Squares, two of their children should have been dwarfs. One child should be normally sized. One child should have died at birth uh, because the combination of the two dominant achondroplastic genes is, is lethal. Um, but they had three normally sized children and one uh, dwarf, and that's the way it was. So just keep in mind, it's flipping the coin. These are all probabilities. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the lecture on how to do Punnett squares. Make sure that you do practice this. It's very important that you do, and I hope you have a fantastic day.